So, <laughs> I just want to know if the hype is justified or not. <laughs> Six of Crows and Crew Kingdom are, I think, like the most hyped geology on booktube, on the book internet. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to know, are they overhyped or is the hype justified? Like, is it legit that good? So I'm going to be putting them to the test and I'm going to be reading them in this reading vlog and sharing all of my thoughts with you. And then we'll come to a conclusion together over whether or not they're overhyped. This video is going to be non-spoilery, so don't worry if you haven't read them yet and you want to know the answer yourself. I will do my best to give you a solid answer, um, but there won't be any spoilers, so you don't need to worry about that. So if you don't know, this series is about like a gang of thieves and criminals led by Kaz Brecker, and they're planning like this major heist, I believe. That's what I really know. It's set in the Grishaverse. I have read the entire Shadow and Bone trilogy. Um, I didn't wasn't really a fan, wasn't really a fan. What's gonna happen? Gonna shoot me? I doubt it. They have to catch me first, I'm like a whippet. I think I gave them like three 2.52, or maybe even harsher than that. I don't think it was, I think it was three 2.52 in terms of my rating of the series. But I also read Ninth House by Lee Bardugo and I gave that five stars and it's one of my favorite books of all time. So this could go either way, this could go either way. I can't predict it, but with the Netflix show for Shadow and Bone, which the crows also feature in, I've just decided it's time to stop putting this video off and to finally read this series and to decide whether they are worth the hype or not. I'm hoping for good things. I'm hoping for good things. So I'm going to go start Six of Crows and I'll check in with you when I'm a little bit of the way through. I feel like today the future starts. So it's a good day. I'm excited. <laughs> So, uh, initial thoughts. It's really good, isn't it? It's really good. It's really good. It's like, so good. <laughs> Why? Why have I waited this long to read it? Firstly, Inej. Carrying it. Carrying it on her shoulders. I am obsessed with her. She's a businesswoman, a TV star, a host, a producer, an actress, a philanthropist. She's one of the most influential, popular, wealthy women in the world. Also Nina, but mostly Inej. The women, the women are in control here. The women uh, who have my, has my heart. Inej, like when it's described, basically if you don't know, Inej is really good at being silent and like sneaking around trying like a spy, but she's also really good with her knives. And when it described like how she's like, I fall in love a bit. Like I'm a little bit obsessed with her in a way that I don't usually get obsessed with characters. Like I don't usually get connected to characters, but like Inej, I love her. I love her. I love her. So if you don't know, which I'm sure everyone knows, but to sum it up quickly, Kaz Brecker has united this kind of like motley crew to break into this prison, I guess? Yeah, high security prison for a lot of money because this guy is being held captive there who has created this potentially very dangerous drug to people with Grisha powers. So they've been hired to do this. And like, it's just incredible. Like, I can't, I can't emphasize true enough how much I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I, all I have to say is Inej. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I'm obsessed. It's really well written. It is Ninth House level of writing already, not Shadow and Bone level of writing. It's night and day. It's night and day. I feel like, oh, she just does something with like how the story moves. I, it's something I can't put into words and it, it's only done very occasionally and it's only done when a book is five stars. But like some authors just know how to make the words flow. I have a very particular thing about how the words flow, how everything comes together. And some people just can't do it. I think it's innate. I don't think it's something that can be learned. And Lee Bardugo has it. She has it. She has it. I'm only a third of the way in, by the way. I realize I haven't said that. I'm a third of the way in. I don't really want to be sitting here talking to you. I just want to be reading it. And in edge. <laughs> <sighs> she is exquisite. I love her. I love her and I love her even more. Yeah, I really love 
the the cutthroatness and like the harshness of the world that we're in. All I can think about is an edge. It's like my brain is like an edge, an edge, an edge, an edge. Like I can't. I can't, I can't say anything else to you. I'm also really loving the audiobook for this. So I'd really recommend the audiobook so far. I've done a lot of the reading via the audiobook. And I think when I carry on reading physically now, I will listen to the audiobook as well. It's a full cast. So when we switch perspectives, because each chapter is in, in a different perspective, um, it switches the narrator. I'd heard some people like say that the audiobook wasn't for them. So that made it that made me wary of it, but I'm really enjoying it. Some of the narrators are better than others. Like the Jesper one, I think I've only heard once, but I wasn't really feeling him. But the Kaz and Inej ones are the best. You guys, this is some good shit. It's really good. I'm really enjoying it. Also, <laughs> I've just come to cook dinner and I've had another thought. My washing machine's on. I'm making my potato wedges, but I was just <laughs> I just carry on listening, right? And I've seen some people say we're not supposed to ship Kaz and Inej, and I do. Currently, I do. I mean, I'm only a third of the way in. We've just had, without spoilers, we've had like a boom, 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 boom scene. I don't know what that was. And <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned. And I ship them. Like, I, my mascara is melting. I ship them. So why am I not supposed to? Questions. Okay, so firstly, apologies for. I've had pretty bad eye strain the past couple of days with like pain and like my eyes twitching. So I didn't want to put anything around my eyes to fuck with it. But even this ring light, I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> it's a no from me. But anyway, I am two thirds of the way into Six of Crows and I'm still really enjoying it. Inej still has supremacy for me, but I've got to admit Jesper, is starting to climb the ranks a bit. I thought Nina would be my favorite character. She's like up there. They're all up there in their own ways. It is very different than what I thought. I thought it was gonna be like money. Well, it is kind of money heists, but I thought it was gonna be like robbing banks, but that's not what it is. It's like a mission that they've been sent on as a group. The one thing I would say, not like negative, but you're constantly getting backstories of the characters, which is very valuable in many ways. Like I almost cried hearing Kaz's backstory, but sometimes I feel like it messes with the pacing a bit of the rest of the story. You're like, listen, we're in this high stakes, exciting moment. And then I'm just like hearing someone's backstory and it just like breaks the story up. Oh my God, I'm struggling to think because my eyes are starting to hurt. I feel like I need to turn the light down and up the camera. Okay, we're just gonna deal with like poor lighting for a sec because I actually can't think while the light is bright in my eyes and it's hurting. Another thing I thought of was, I, here's the thing, I read Shadow and Bone Trilogy to like have an enhanced reading experience of this, to fully understand the Grisha verse, Grisha powers, and listen, I, <laughs> when I finished the Shadow and Bone Trilogy, I was like, I still don't quite understand it. How do I explain it? Like how it works, like the whole like corporowny, all the different words <laughs> for the same thing. I don't, I still don't really understand that. I was thinking, has that actually enhanced my reading experience to the extent that I would recommend reading that trilogy? Because I didn't enjoy the trilogy, but I do think if I hadn't have read it, I wouldn't understand some of the context in this of what it means to be Grisha. It's quite a big theme of like the burden of being Grisha, of yeah, having those powers and the position it puts you in the society. And I don't think if I was just here reading this, I don't think I would fully have such like a well-rounded understanding of what that means for someone, you know, to be Grisha. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad that I have read the Shadow and Bone trilogy for going forward, like reading this, reading King of Scars. However, I don't know if I would recommend you do that if you haven't read any of them yet, because the, the trilogy ain't good. good. Like, like the, the original trilogy isn't, isn't good. good. The step up in terms of like writing quality from that to this is 
so incredible. Like, I don't understand how someone would do that. Like, literally, Ruin and Rising, Lord, Lord, it, it wasn't for me. If it came on, I wouldn't necessarily um, skip it. Well, that's not true. I would. It wasn't for me. But Leave I Do Go in this, the way that every scene serves a purpose with, like, developing these characters, developing the story, the pace at which it goes at. This is like masterful writing. This is like some of the best YA writing ever. Like Lee Bodigo is an amazing writer. So the step up is just incredible. It's really good. I think this is gonna be five stars. I don't wanna speak too soon, but I think it's gonna be five stars. <laughs> So that was not how I was expecting this to end. I was a bit shook about a few things that happened at the end there. I enjoyed it, but something about that last third, I don't know if I just wasn't in the mood. It was like a four star. So like, I feel like the thing as a whole is a 4.5 star. I think I like the vibes of Ketterdam as a place and like the toxicity of it and the, the harshness of it. And so I think, I think Crooked Kingdom is predominantly set in Ketterdam, so that's what I'm most excited for. But anyway, I love these characters. These are some of the best well-written characters I've ever read, particularly in terms of dialogue. Like, writing good dialogue, funny dialogue, is not easy. Like, that's not something a lot of people can do. But Lee Bardugo completely manages to do it, and the way that they bond, and like, the way that you can see their relationships growing throughout the book is really just, um so good it's so good i really loved how flawed they all were i wouldn't say they're like morally gray that's a term that people like to like throw around a lot but i wouldn't say they're morally gray they're just like flawed and they have struggles and they have so many dimensions to them each of these characters 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 yep i really like kaz i really like me like nina oh my god nina 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 Nina, Nina, Nina came into her own in this last third. She was probably the highlight of it for me. She was like a fucking queen. Jesper and Wylan. I understand now why it's so loved because these characters are so, so easy to fall in love with. And at the same time, the plot is just so fast paced and so well done. So it's like a perfect amalgamation of everything you want from a book, essentially. But I think, yeah, for some reason, like the last bit didn't hit it for me as much as I wanted it to, although it was amazing. Just like my personal, like, this is a five star feeling went away a bit. So I'm gonna give it 4.5 stars. I completely understand the hype. I'm so happy I finally read it. Yeah, it's just such a good book. I understand now. I understand. <laughs> so I'm gonna start Crooked Kingdom now tonight. I don't know how much of it I'm gonna get through. This is longer than this one was, but oh my God, look, we've got a map of Ketterdam. I'm so excited that it's going to be, well, hopefully it's going to be mostly set here because that is like the 1.5 that I felt like was missing from Six of Crows for me. So, oh my God, I'm so excited to also go into a series straight away. Like I never read series one after the other, but this is one of the only series I've actually, I mean, obviously I was going to do, be doing it for the video. So like, good thing I feel like this, but I rarely feel like that with series where I want to go into the next one straight away. But because of how Six of Crows left off, I want to read this straight away. And the characters, like I just have to know the answers to so many questions that Lee go um, raised. So I'm so excited. Okay, I'm going to go start it, but I don't know if I will check in tonight because it's long and I've already read loads today so we'll see. Right, <laughs> so I am a third of the way through Crooked Kingdom and I'm really enjoying it. The album's amazing, song to song, I can't stress it enough. What I really love about this is that it is more of what I expected from the first book in that it is lots of planning and plotting and like figuring out almost lots of different heists. There's lots of steps to the plan in this book. And that's more what I was expecting, like them sitting around in a room together going, we've got to do this, this and this, and like making like a plan as a team. Whereas Six of Crows is more one big plot. 
one big heist. Wylan, Wylan is starting to become almost my favorite. No, Inej is still my favorite. Then probably Nina, then Wyland and Jasper. But Kaz is like the thing that holds it all together. Without Kaz, it wouldn't be a thing. So like, he, he here's the thing. Kaz is an incredibly interesting, well-rounded character, but like he's never gonna be your favorite character because firstly, he is the most cutthroat. And secondly, it's almost like, I like to call it Alice in Wonderland syndrome, where like when you have this big cast of characters who are also interesting, the main character, the one who holds it all together, is never gonna be your favorite character. Like Alice, Alice is the most boring character. I'm not saying Kaz is boring, but Alice is never gonna be your favorite character. I don't think Kaz is ever gonna be your favorite character, in my opinion. There's nothing wrong with my views or beliefs because I have freedom of speech and everything I'm saying is true. So I still love him but he's just the thing that helps all the other ones shine, I think. Oh my God, also Nina Matthias. I'm falling for it. I am falling for it. I'm falling for it. But I don't know if it's gonna be a five star again. Like it's feeling like a 4.5, like so close, but I am just very strict with my five stars. So like a 4.5 is probably a five. Like other people would probably just give it a five, but I'm very strict. So it's feeling like a 4.5 at the minute. I'm gonna go play some Sims and listen to the audiobook. <laughs> I am now two thirds of the way into Crooked Kingdom. And objectively, I think this is better than Six of Crows. However, Six of Crows was still a 4.5. It, that doesn't make this a five. This is maybe like, if we're being picky, this is like a 4.75, but I think I'm just gonna give it a 4.5. Like, unless it pulls it out of the bag in this final third, but I haven't had that five star feeling where it just feels like, oh my God, this book was meant for me. But it's still, when it's a 4.5, that means I can completely understand why this is a five for other people and why this is so popular. It just like, a five star feeling is a very specific, Feeling. Oh, get over yourself, love. Silly car. But I am loving the way that the relationships are developing. I think that that has been done so well across the geology, the way that we care for all the different relationships within the, the gang. I cannot emphasize to enough, I know I keep saying this, but how happy I am that this is in Ketterdam. I really just love the setting of Ketterdam and yeah, exploring it and going into it in much more detail. It's what I wanted. Like it's what I wanted from this second book and it's done that so well, but I don't know how I'm about to be fulfilled by there only being two in this series. Like I don't, I'm, I know we have King of Scars after this and we're following some of the, or like maybe it's just Nina. I know we're following Nina in that, but I don't know how I'm gonna deal with not being able to follow all of these characters for more than the remaining 170 pages. Like I just wanna be with them and I don't understand why there's only two. I'm not looking forward to how it's gonna end because I have a feeling I'm not gonna be happy because I want more. And there's a reason why there's not more. There must be. Anyway, I'm gonna go finish it and then I will come back to you with my final thoughts and my final thoughts on the series as a whole as well. Even though I knew what was coming, I still cried. Even though I knew, even though I knew what was gonna happen, even though I've known for years what was going to happen, I still cried. A fucking clown. We are a stupid bitch. We are a fucking clown. I loved it. <laughs> I'm not gonna give it a five star, but it's like a 4.75. Like it's really close. And I don't know, maybe if I was to reread these books or something, I would make them five stars. There's something almost about the Grisha world that I feel like I, I keeps me a step removed is that 2.5 that I'm not fully sure if I love in a way I can't quite articulate because perhaps I didn't love Shadow and Bone. I think that's why I loved Ninth House by Lee Bardugo because it had 
her writing, her characters, which are incredible, but it wasn't that Grisha-ness, which I always feel like I almost just don't understand. Like, it, I'm always like, I should understand you, but for some reason I don't. You know, it's not like, say, the fifth season, for example, by N.K. Jemisin, where, like, I can just accept that I'm not going to understand this. Like... I feel like this world isn't that complicated, but I still don't kind of get it. Maybe that's the 2.5, but it's like a 4.75. It's very close. One thing that this series does so well, but particularly in this book, I feel like it almost did its success in this book, but it definitely did this in this one, is the characters leaving you five steps behind them. I love that. I know some people don't like it, but I love when the characters know so much that I don't know, particularly with like the heisty mission sections of these. You would not know the plan that Kaz and the team have. And so when the plan is being enacted, you're being constantly surprised and like things will happen. You're like, oh shit, really? But then something else will happen. You'll be like, oh my God, what? And then there's something. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. Rather than them saying, this is the plan, this is what we're gonna do. You go into it thinking you know the plan, but you don't. You don't know the plan. And then you see it fall into motion and all the dominoes fall into motion in time with the people who they're tricking. Yeah, I love it when a book does that. I love being kept in the dark for so long and all the other characters like kind of know the, the deal and you don't. Like, I think that's amazing. In my opinion, these are not overrated. They're not overrated. I think they deserve their hype. They deserve their love. I'm so glad I have finally read them. If you've been thinking about it for whatever reason, go read them. If you love them, let me know down in the comments. If you don't love them, we can talk too. Final conclusion, I think they deserve the hype that they get. But I actually think I prefer Crooked Kingdom, which I didn't think after having read Six of Crows would be possible, but I think Crooked Kingdom is better. Like the way that all of the characters' stories wrap up. And it was the perfect ending. Without saying anything, everything ended the only way it could end. Like it ended so well, it ended so well. And here's the thing, I kind of want to read King of Scars straight away. This was never in my plans. This was never a book I thought I was going to read soon. But having just read this, I'm kind of like, I probably won't because this was like not even one of my top books that I was planning to read, but like, I kind of want to. I feel like I need, because I know this for those Nikolai, Zoya, and Nina, I need Wyland's story. Like, the way that we leave off with Wylan. Oh my god, I just love him. My love for Wylan has been slow, but particularly in this book, I feel like he's shone. And I need a book on Wylan, so. Who's gonna give it to me? Well, Lee Bardugo is. Lee? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad I finally read them. Leave me your thoughts on this series down below. If you've gotten to the end, comment like a crow. Is there a crow emoji or a bird emoji? One of them. And I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!